Hi, I'm Niall from Gulfstream Boat Sales. I normally sell boats for a living, but today I'm selling our Ford F-150 Harley-Davidson uh, edition pickup truck. Um, this is a 2007 truck. It's got 50, 57,600 miles on the clock. It's in absolutely immaculate condition. And um, it's our own truck. We've, we've owned it for, since uh, November 2015. So, uh, boats and pickup trucks go together really well, su surprisingly enough, because um, you need something big to tow these things around. So we bought this with the intention of keeping it, using it for the business, um, and uh, having it like, as like a marketing tool. But whenever it came down to it, I really can't find it within myself to, to put this thing in the water or put it to work. It's just too nice. Um, and I've also got my eye on another, um, another truck. So. We decided we'd, um, we'd sell it, we kept it really good, it's done no work at all, um, worth talking about, and we decided to uh, see if we can move it on to a new home, new owner. What we're going to do is I'll walk you around the truck, we use videos to sell all the boats, so I thought we might as well use a video to sell the truck. I'll walk you around it, I'll show you the condition of it, show you the paintwork, show you the wheels, show you the interior, start up the engine, and just give you a really good idea of uh, the condition that this one's in and hopefully help you to figure out whether you might be interested enough to come and have a look at it. So as far as I know, the history of the truck, it was brought into the UK um, whenever it was pretty much brand new, uh, back in 2007. It's had, I think we're the third owner. Um, I bought it off a guy in Scotland. It's been in Scotland, there's a lot, bunch of service receipts, a lot of history with it, previous MOT certificates and uh, service invoices and all that type of stuff. Um, it's been looked after like a baby. The guy I bought it off using as a Sunday driver, took it to uh, shows and stuff, and never had it outside, so it's kept in a garage. We've always kept it in the showroom as well, so it's always been kept inside. But the thing that uh, really blew me away about it whenever I looked at it originally was the fact that the bodywork is as straight as a die. It's the, the paintwork is perfect, on blemish. There's no chips, no damage, no dents or anything um, anywhere around it, and it looks in really good shape. So. Um, this, this being the Harley Davidson edition truck means that it has a lot of uh, styling upgrades over the standard uh, Ford F-150. So you've got this big chrome bullet uh, effect grill across the front. This here is an add-on, like this wind deflector thing, but it looks quite well, so we left that on. Um, it's got uh, sort of tinted black, shadow black headlights. It's got the big 22 inch forged aluminium alloys all the way around, so they're Harley Davidson special edition wheel. It's got loads of Harley Davidson badges all the way around it. It's got these um, these little uh, side steps, with these sort of discreet chrome cap side steps on it. Um, and then it's got the, uh, the Harley Davidson badging down across the back of it as well. There was some orange stripes on it too, but I didn't really like look at those too much, so we took the stripes off. Um, and I think it looks far meaner and slicker without them. Um, yeah, this truck atta attracts loads of attention. Everywhere you go, it sounds great, so it makes a great noise. You get heads whipping around just from the sound of the engine. And then when we pull up the petrol stations and stuff, everybody comes over and asks you what it is. And they all say, I didn't realize Harley Davidson made pickup trucks. <laughs> Obviously, they're a bit more, um, you know, they're, over in America, they're more common. People know what they are, but this side of the Atlantic, um, a lot of people uh, don't really know what it is. You can see the, the, the paintwork here, the, you can see your reflection in it, perfect. The, the, the body lines are completely straight, all the gaps and stuff in the doors are perfect. And it really does look the part, it's credit to a previous owner, so how well this thing's been kept. And as far as I know, it's never been used for any work. It was a, it's always been a bit of a show pony, you know. Um, it's got the rear headrest mount DVD players in the back of it and stuff. It's, Got all the toys and um, the interior's got loads of Harley Davidson upgrades as well. So we'll show you around all that in a wee minute. Um, taking a look across the front, one, one thing that really surprised me about it is these bumpers are cast iron. So um, it's obviously a big ladder frame chassis underneath that. It's a fairly heavy sort of vehicle, being a truck. It's built for hard work. But these, this is plastic, this is plastic, but this here's cast iron. A couple of minor little stone chips on that. Um, but you really don't see them. You're going to get that obviously in a car this age. Um, you get the fog lights down low again. Everything looks really good across the front and down along the, uh, the passenger side of it. 
it's in perfect shape as well. There's no, no dings, no, scra no scratches, no scrapes. The, the, the bodywork on this thing is perfect. Side steps look good down here as well. The wheels are good. This wheel, the wheel here is perfect, I think. On the other side, um, I'll, sh I'll show you in a minute, but that has a wee bit of damage on the, on the wheel, but that, that one there is perfect. This one here is perfect as well. It's the same size wheels and tires. So the, the tires are Cooper Xeon LTZ tires. The size on them is 305 40 R22. They're like an off-road tire. Probably wouldn't be my personal preference, not wouldn't be my first choice of tire, but there's loads of tread left in them all the way around. Um, and given the price, I didn't want to put a set of tires on it whenever I didn't need to. But um, they're, they're in perfect condition. You also see back here, we've got these uh, chrome tailpipes, so that's another Harley Davidson upgrade. We've got these chrome, chrome exhaust pipes that really look the part as well. Taking a look at the back end of the truck, we've got these um, smoked taillights that match up with the smoked uh, headlights and stuff from the front of the truck. Um, obviously everything's been properly converted to, uh, to UK use, so we've got orange indicators, standard stop and taillights. We've got this high level brake light up here along with a courtesy light. So if you open the door, see it just went out there, that's like a, a courtesy light. So if you're loading or unloading the truck after dark or even just getting home and stuff, you'll park it outside the door and walk home. You, that, you get good elimination from that. Um, again, we've got the cast iron bumper back here. We have parking sensors on it, which are all operating perfectly. You can disable those up at the dash too, if you want to, if you're using it for you know, backing up to a trailer or something. It has a receiver hitch on it. Um, whenever I bought the truck, there was no tow bar at all. Because I was planning on using it for towing, I bought, and I'm, you know, uh, I got, there's a company in uh, South England somewhere that makes the, the hitches to suit the, the trucks. So you send away the measurements, you measure the height of the, the hitch off the, foot, the ground and stuff, and he makes you the hitch that you can bolt in there. So I do have, I now have a hitch for it. But as I said, whenever I bought it, there was nothing there. It didn't look like it ever be, had ever been used. So I genuinely don't think this truck did any towing um, up until I had it. And I used it a handful of times. And like I said, I couldn't bring myself to put it in the water. So it's never, it's never actually got its uh, ass wet, so to speak. It's wired for UK electrics with a standard seven pin plug. It's working perfectly. This is your, your reversing light down here. So that's an aftermarket thing. Obviously, because it's not part of the standard American setup, and um, well, it, it, you have reversing lights, but they, they've been converted into indicators. So that's why you had it put a reversing light down here. This is all done before I got the truck, obviously, and there's a fog lamp over on this side as well. So they're quite neat. They're not. It's not a hatchet job. I've seen some of these American trucks converted over. Really, they, they butcher them to, to make the lights work, and they put on rubbish uh, quality things, but. These ones are fairly neat and they, they tuck nice and tidily and underneath the bumper. Um, one, the only real fault I have to point out on the exterior of the Jeep is this one area on the bumper which has been slightly pushed in. I don't know if you can even see it there. So it's, it hasn't broken the paint or, or anything like that, but it has obviously touched something which has pushed that in a wee bit. Um, and we just haven't gone the trouble of taking it off to try and knock it back out. One of the great things about this truck, whenever I found it, was it has this um, load cover. Um, fact, well, it's not a factory, it's an aftermarket item. It's ARE, it's tailor made for the truck. Lifts up with two gas assist struts, got a carpeted uh, bottom on it, uh, and it's all working really, really well. Um, but it just makes it so much more practical. So, you know, if you, you are using the, the truck for carrying luggage or gear or whatever. You can use that. It has a Ford factory bed liner on it. Um, the back end of the truck is immaculate, really clean. Again, does not look like it's done any work at all. This obviously hasn't. This has been a personal vehicle. It's a tire like you know. It hasn't been a hasn't been used for work or anything or tradesmen or any that sort of stuff. The bed liner's really good condition and the. Uh, Tailgate and everything's perfect, um, and the, the, the cover's perfect. On any trucks, I, I have a, another pickup truck, a Isuzu, and I'm pretty careful about it as well. But I don't know what it is, but every single pickup truck you, you see that's been used for work seems to have like dents in the back end of it, whether it's been dropped down onto like a trailer 
uh, jockey wheel or whether there's stuff inside, hitting it from the inside. And my truck, it's now something like eight years old or something. It's the back end, and I've never done it, so I don't know who's doing it. <laughs> the back end of it's like a patchwork quilt with wee dings all over it. This one here is perfect. There's no marks in it at all. It's got a proper mirror finish on it there. See the reflection on it and stuff. It's, it's just great. Really, really nice condition. The wheel on the, the rear driver's side is does is shown a, a, some signs of, of uh, wear um, just on the finish. So it's some of this here aluminium corrosion around this wheel. Don't know why this one has done this, um, but maybe a manufacturing defect or something. But I just want to point it out so you know what you're coming to. You're not going to be disappointed when we arrive. But um, it wasn't bad enough for me. It was like that when I bought it. I didn't think it was bad enough to warrant doing anything about it. But just so you know about it. Um, the front wheel has one wee minor spot of that just around the tyre valve here. It's quite hard to see and apart from that the rest of this wheel and the hub is perfect. The truck has this keyless uh, door entry. It's another thing that everybody always asks about. What's, what's all these buttons about on the door? I haven't actually spent the time to figure out how they work but it is fitted with a keyless entry system, but it, I mean it's a remote control central locking on the key, so why you would need that, I don't really know. Um, but whenever you open the door, the, the size of this thing strikes you. It's 19, it's just over 19 feet long, it's 6 foot 4 inches tall, it's just under 7 feet wide, it's a huge truck. Um, and you sort of have to climb up into it, grab on the steering wheel, climb up into it. Um, the interior is, um, also in immaculate condition. Just turn this off a second. Um, so you can see here we've got uh, big leather uh, captain's chairs for the, the driver and passenger. Very comfortable chairs. You've got electric adjustment on it. I think the rear, yeah, the seat back is just manual, but you've got um, electric, fore and aft control, and height adjustment. So the, the center console has piano black. Um, panels down either side around the air vents and then you've got this uh, this panel here with the wee Harley Davidson logos on it as well around the stereo and the climate control system and stuff and then you've got your limited edition Harley Davidson F-150 model build year here 2007 uh, build number uh, is 03166 and then you've got your, your chassis number on the plate here as well um, so it's a uh, full leather Upholstery is a much nicer interior than you'll find on a, one of the standard trucks and um, this one has very little evidence of use um, the only thing that sort of well there's, there's two things one I have to show you is that one we the slight tear on the driver's seat which looks like it was done uh, accidentally and then this this here leather uh, console top has discolored slightly for some reason it's just a slightly different shade to the, the, the rest of the, the seats, so I don't know whether they used a different grade of leather or from a different batch or something, but it looks original, it doesn't look like it's been replaced or anything, but it is, um, it's a slightly different colour for some reason, don't know why. Um, so, you've got, uh, let me just fire this thing up here, so it's got 57,603 miles on it. And so you got these Harley Davidson gauges as well, the white face gauges with the Harley Davidson logo on there. And there's no warning lights or anything on it, and it's running like a dream. So, what do we see? Just go through this uh, trip computer here to show you. See the time reset, exterior temperature, trip miles. But there's a bit scary looking that number. <laughs> That's five miles a gallon. That's uh, from <laughs> moving the truck around the uh, the shed. We'll talk about that in a minute. But if that concerns you, you should probably turn this off, this video off now, because this truck's not for you. You really don't want me thinking about fuel consumption when we buy this bad boy. Um, so it's a good computer, and uh, the fuel range. I find the range thing to be really accurate, actually. Um, so you got your rev counter, speedo. Uh, engine temperature, oil pressure, battery volts, and all your usual warning lights and stuff. Got our uh, light switch over here. Um, you, there is an auto light function on it, which is really good. And you can turn them on and off manually. You've got uh, 
backlight control here on the instruments. Uh, this is your uh, for the fog light at the rear. Obviously, that's not factory. Um, this is power adjustable pedals, so you can adjust the the pedals up and down. It's obviously automatic and all that sort of stuff. But you can move the pedals in and out to get a comfortable steering position. You've got full steering wheel controls here for the cruise control and the stereo as well, and temperature and fan settings and stuff. It's the Ford uh, six disc CD changer. Um, so you get the American stations, it, it doesn't tune to the even stations, but it's, uh, it's very good, it? you know, the steering wheel controls, everything works there. It's a six disc changer, so you can load in six CDs. Um, there's a Parrot Bluetooth system installed, which works really well, so you get hands-free control. Um, got air conditioning. Um, climate control system here, you can control that from the steering wheel as well. Uh, you get seat heaters on both the passenger and driver's seat. Um, cigarette lighter, there's a parking sensor switch, you can turn your parking sensors off. I've got a cigarette lighter down there as well. Um, gear shift, big huge gear shift lever here on the right hand side. Um, the, it's a four-speed automatic transmission with overdrive, so you can turn all ordinarily the overdrive is on, but you can turn it off here. And you get this wee light coming up here on the dash, overdrive off. So if you want to lower the gear ratio, if you're take, you say you've got a heavy load on board and you want to lower the gear ratio or for overtaking and stuff, you can do that and you can manually select uh, the first and second there as well. Got the cup holders here, and uh, you can pull the these cups out if you want to. Go for the uh, you know the big the big gulp down the McDonald's. <laughs> so you can fit in the big massive cups in there, and you get two more cup holders back here. But we'll take a look on the back of it uh, shortly. You got another 12 volt power outlet here, and then you got your four wheel drive control. So this this is a permanent all wheel drive. It's the only the Harley Davidson is the only uh, F150 of its generation to have the permanent four wheel drive system or all wheel drive. So it automatically uh, distributes the power to whichever given wheel so you no danger of losing the back end on this thing or wheel spin or anything and if you want to say you are off-road or something you can switch it into four high and just locks it into four-wheel drive uh, but ordinarily you just drive it with uh, the all-wheel drive so that's good a lot of these American pickups have uh, either two-wheel drive or selectable four-wheel drive so the all-wheel drive is a sophisticated system you would notice up here there was a sat nav it's actually still there it's in the glove compartment here um, which lived up here, um, but uh, up there on that bracket. I took it off because it, it's old technology now, it's a bit rubbish. Um, I just didn't bother unscrewing this thing just in case anybody wanted to re reinstall it, but you could just remove that and then it's it's gone completely. But the condition of uh, everything in here is, uh, is really nice. So you've got your seat controls here, electric, um, seat adjustment, you've got the set positions as well, so you can st store up to two different uh, seating positions. Here's the little tear in the seat that I wanted to tell you about. So that's something that was on the truck whenever I got it. I don't know how it happened, but it must be, it's not normal wear and tear because you don't really, you know, you don't really contact that part of the seat whenever you get in and out. Again, this could be replaced, you want to re replace that one panel, but that is the, uh, that's the full extent of the, anything that's wrong with the interior. Um, back seat is, again, it's huge. You, you, there's seats for, there's obviously belts for three people, but you can easily fit four people across the back of that. I'll just jump in to show you the sort of room. There's loads of room here, even for adults. Um, uh, you've got full three point seat belts for all rear seat passengers. You've got the Harley Davidson logos on these uh, seat rests, uh, seat backs, as, as, as well as on the front seats. Um, it has got an, it's been fitted with an Alpine. Uh, DVD player, so you've got the DVD screens in the uh, in the rear and mounted in the headrests. I've never had these work. I've never uh, gone to the trouble of switching this on. But the, whenever you turn the thing on in the glove compartment, the head unit lives in the glove, glove compartment, and there's a um, like an inverter for powering it up in here. So it lives down in here. There's also like rear remote controls. I think that's ones for the. One's for the sat nav or something, and we got one's for the DVD player. Um, so, 
they're all powering up and stuff like that there so um, good to have overhead lights there's sunroof in this truck as well um, and uh, the other cool thing to show you is the rear uh, sliding window here at the back so this rear window slides open so I think that's like an American feature so you can talk to your workforce if say you have a truck <laughs> these trucks in Florida there's always wait you see them go down the freeway or the highway with like six Mexicans or something in the back end of them so there's obviously you can speak to your staff but uh, I find it good for if you're reversing up their trailer or something the uh, your your sidekick can guide you on better so that's really good and um, get this full down armrest two big cup holders here you get uh, heater outlets here and you get another 12 volt um, power socket there as well so again it's all in beautiful condition so taking a look around the door jams then on the, uh, on the passenger side as well, you can see that everything's in, in lovely condition. Upholstery is all great, it's the treads and stuff, um, the door jams itself, all the door trim panels are all great. We've got factory tinted glass here as well across the, on the two back doors and across the rear window. So um, that's factory smoke glass, again as part of the Harley Davidson package. And then take a look at the passenger side. Again, the passenger seat has electric adjustment for fore and aft and, and height. Um, the piano back panels again. Uh, decent um, glove compartment and huge, huge bit, of, bit, bit of storage in the on the armrest. And they've got big cup holders, the big storage areas in the in the doors as well. You see on the door also, you've got this little Harley Davidson. Um, trim panel too so it's that piano black with the, the little harley logos on it as well so um it's all really good if you've never driven uh one of these american pickup trucks it is a, it's a different experience to driving um obviously in a sort of uk vehicles first of all the power delivery and stuff's a lot different um it does feel big on the road but it's got a surprisingly uh small turning circle so it's the turning circle and this is actually better than on my isuzu pickup so you can um, it's easy enough to get in and out of parking spaces and stuff. The maneuverability is surprisingly good. Once you get used to the size of it, at, at first it feels bigger than it actually is, but once you start to get used to the size of it, I have no trouble driving around town and, and all that type of thing. Um, but it does, it, it doesn't drive, you know, whenever I first drove it, I thought it feels a bit commercial, you know, which is re re realistic to presume because it is a commercial vehicle. It's not going to drive like a BMW X5 or or like a Range Rover, drives like a truck, but it planted, it's solid on the road, it's really comfortable on longer journeys, especially with a big seat. If you want to, um, you can, if you put your foot down, I think it does not the 16 with nine seconds, which is faster than my diesel pickup, anyway, that's for sure. Um, it's a 5.4 liter V8 engine, it's got the 5.4 liter V8 Triton motor, so it's got the top spec engine. It makes 300 horsepower, I think it makes 365 foot, foot pound of torque, it goes great, it's loads of grunt for towing and stuff like that there if you want to do that. And um, like I said, the sound off it is amazing, so it really does, the, the noise turn, turns heads. Um, and you have to have, I think you, if you're going to buy a truck like this, you might as well get one with the right engine. There's no point buying one of these. It's like, I looked at buying a Dodge Challenger recently, and uh, you can get, the, there's an SRT8 one, which is the 6.1 or 6.4 litre V8, but you can get a 3.6 litre V6 for a fraction of the price, you know, knock 30% or 40% off, but in this country, maybe in America it might make sense, but in this country, if you're going to buy an American car, an American truck, why would you buy some of the V6? I just, to me, it doesn't make sense. You want the V8. Now, fuel consumption, again, like I said earlier, if you're considering, if fuel consumption is a big consideration to you, forget about it. Go and buy a diesel, diesel pickup, or transit van or something, because this thing's going to be harder in fuel, but it ain't ridiculous. Um, Around the town, if you're going to be driving around the town, using it for short trips and stepping on the loud pedal and making, you know, um, accelerating away from lights and stuff like that, then you will see figures around about 10, 11 miles the gallon. If you're driving it on the road, on the motorway, and you're being sensible about your your uh, use of the throttle and stuff, um, you can get it up to 20. I've seen 20 miles the gallon on the display. 
a broad rule of thumb is about 16 miles to the gallon. That's what I'm getting out of it. Now, I think the computer is, is geared for American gallons, so their lot, American gallons are a little bit smaller than UK gallons. So uh, 16, I think maybe it's 18 or something. 11 is maybe about 13 or something. But you don't buy a car like this for, for fuel consumption. Like, that goes without saying. And uh, it's running really good. But what we'll do is we'll fire it up now, let you hear the engine. And uh, yeah, it's running really sweet. Starts first turn of the key. Um, that's the standard exhaust as well. So I think it sounds really good, but there's a ton of aftermarket exhaust kits out there, exhaust cutouts, and all that sort of stuff. So you want that to sound louder, you can make it louder. Um, but it, I think it's plenty loud as it is. The engine, uh, all, this is like nearly all American cars, these gas struts on the, the bonnet, which is really good. So the, the bonnet just lifts up itself. You don't need to put a thing into it or anything. So as I said, it's the 5.4 litre V8 Triton motor. It's a single overhead cam unit, three valve per cylinder. It takes 300 horsepower, 365 foot pound of torque. It's only, it's only the 57,000 miles on it. Where I bought it, it had 50,000 on it, so we, we put away six or 7,000 miles on it. Um, the only thing I've had to do is replace a, a brake pipe. Um, the engine itself is uh, in beautiful condition. Some of these little clips and catches, a wee bit of corrosion and stuff on it. It's obviously just the quality of the material that they use in the factory. A wee bit disappointing. But um, other than that, the block itself is really good. Um, this end is made up nice and clean. The oil levels, all the fluids were good. Um, I did a bit of service uh, after I bought it. Just went through and you know, checked the oil filter and all that sort of stuff. Just taking a very quick spin up the road here so you can sort of see how this thing accelerates and brakes and stuff but it's a lovely quiet ride on it there's no big shakes or rattles or squeaks or anything whenever you put your foot down you want to move it does go noise of the vh great pulls cleanly gear shifts are clean tracks in a straight line it doesn't pull to either side um, does, you know you're driving a truck, I mean it feels big and heavy, I mean this thing's like two and a half ton. Um, so it's not, it doesn't go like a sports car or anything. But it, um, it does go, it does go good. And it really does get addictive driving these VHs. You get all sorts of, <laughs> I don't even know if I know that guy, people in the heart have Um so yeah, it, it turns heads as well. That's the thing. I love the I love the fact it's different. It stands out in the crowd. I've never come across another one in Ireland. Um, and uh, you know, people people react to it. It's not the usual run of the mill car. And whether you just want it for something for you know for fun for driving at the weekends, or you want to use it as a for a business as a promotional tool, it's a great car. We actually took it down to Donegal. Um, so we're from Northern Ireland here, Donegal, uh, beautiful beaches and stuff down there. We've got a holiday home down there. We took it down uh, one weekend, went surfing and stuff. And I tell you that the crowd at the beach, the number of people that spoke to me about it um, was was on real. There was serious, serious interest in it. And it was so good for, see, for throwing all this, just fired all the stuff in the back of the, the truck. Easily carries five, five adults. It was, a few of my brothers were home, they live in England, and uh, we went down, we went surfing and stuff, it was, it was just great, you know? Um, so I'm, def I'm definitely getting another one. If this sells, if it doesn't sell, it's no great hardship, because I genuinely do love this truck. But um, it just, I don't want to ruin it either, so I thought if I sell this one, get another one, use it for a couple of months, and I'm just keeping my, my, uh, my usual Isuzu for all the, 
the donkey work because this is this would be too good to to use for that type of stuff. It's driving really nice. It's a lovely vehicle to take on longer journeys, motorway journeys. The cruise control works really good. Um, and it is, you know, you can these big comfortable armchairs, big armrests both sides, and brakes and stuff are good. You've got it's uh, disc brakes all around, so uh, disc brakes with uh, electronic brake force distribution, so it stops really well. Um, and it's just a nice, big, comfortable vehicle to drive. And if you're looking to tow with it, as I said, it's more than capable of, of pulling like boats caravans, trailers, whatever. I think it's plated up to like four ton um, in the States now. In the UK, I think we're limited here to maybe 3,500 kilos is the maximum you'll find in a UK car. The thing's plated to tow up to up to four tons. So it's uh, just a great all around truck in really nice condition. I love it. And uh, if you like the look of it, if you want to come and have it, see it, test drive it or whatever, uh, don't hesitate. The numbers and stuff are on the, the advert along with the email address. Just give us a shout and we can uh, see what you think of it. Thanks for watching.